Hi guys, my name is Marcel and drawing hands can be kind of... Uh, oh, man. Ah! Scary! <laughs> okay, most of you can't get a hand right at all. But maybe you're like able to draw a decent looking hand already. In any case, if you want to make some real good art, you really need some dynamic and good looking hand poses. Uh, but again, that is kind of... Ah! Yeah, that. <laughs> it's going to be my goal that every single one of you will be able to draw a hand just like this once you are done with this video. So be sure that you have something ready to draw along, be it a piece of paper or a fancy sketchbook that you may have gotten from a certain art YouTuber. Because believe me, today you will realize why your hands are always looking so bad and how you can change that. Also, as always, there's going to be a cheat sheet at the end of this video, so make sure that you stick around till the very end. So grab your art supplies of choice. My art supplies are linked down in the info box or on my website, as always. Now let's get handy. Like a set. Get it? Because of- You guys know my videos. I like to split lessons or levels by difficulty. So the first step would be to figure out what level you are at right now. And if you're a person that still draws hands like this, uh, then you're still at level minus one. What are you doing? I like to draw hands like Shut this. the fu- Drawing something stroke by stroke might help you getting individual parts of this drawing correct. That's true, but the whole hand itself is still going to be off. Oh, but I'm better, is what I'm hearing you say, because I'm using guidelines. And well, definitely yes. not Having your basic guidelines is nice and all, and I think most of you are using guidelines already. That's a very good thing, just to be clear, but I don't need to tell you that this sometimes just doesn't cut it. Hands can still look off even if the individual parts have been drawn with guidelines. That means that this is what you definitely need to learn first, and that's drawing the basic proportions of a hand first so it doesn't look transformed, stretched or off in any other kind of way. Unpopular opinion, maybe, but I personally think just drawing the rough silhouette of a hand can already look really solid if you know what you're doing. So this is going to be our very first baby step, making your hand not look like it's been drawn by a three-year-old. All right, let's think back. Way before all of the details and stuff, and also way before all of your guidelines, there is only a rough silhouette of your hand. So you might already guess what I'm trying to say, but I'm drawing a hand, I'm not doing it like this. I'm also definitely not starting out like that. If it's a hand pose that's really complicated, I usually start blocking in a rough silhouette. And this only makes sense if you think about it, because if you already have the silhouette blocked out, you now have just limited your drawing. So your proportions are not going to be completely off, since you can't draw out of these borders anyway. And this is going to be your first exercise. Try blocking in these hands right here. Use some basic shapes and don't get too detailed. Just so we're clear, your main goal here is getting the proportions right, so having a rough outline is all you really need. And yeah, if you really struggle here, like if drawing the proportions of your reference is something you just can't get right, then I can assure you that this isn't all that bad, because there are exercises for getting better at drawing proportions. And here's a video where I explain these exercises and show you how you can practice this. Okay, now that we've taken care of the most common beginner problem, let's take a look at level number two, aka constructing a hand. Okay, so how would you proceed with drawing from having just a rough silhouette? Uh, well, as you know, I like building complicated things with basic shapes, and I guess if you have seen my other video on drawing hands, or if you've read my book, you already know all about these shapes that I'm about to use. But Here's a quick rundown for all of you unsubscribed heathens. It's actually pretty simple. Here are three rough areas in your palm that you need to know about before you're drawing anything else. Let's call them Hypothenar, Thenar and Steve, because I still couldn't figure out how this part is called. And your fingers are the exact same in case you didn't know already. They also consist of, you guessed it, 
three parts. I know this seems kind of irrelevant now, but by keeping that in mind, you can avoid making the beginner mistake of drawing a finger all at once and instead tackle it like it's actually supposed to be drawn anatomically. So now you have your building blocks, basically the tools you need, but it's obviously up to you to practice with them. Try using these blocks to draw some hands. Don't forget to start out like we did in the beginning by drawing a rough silhouette first in order to get all of the proportions correct and then, if you are satisfied, you can use these building blocks just like we've used them before. And don't worry if you can't memorize all of this, like always there's going to be a cheat sheet at the end of the video where you can make a screenshot of everything. I think you should practice this a couple of times now before we're taking it up a notch, but if you're successful here, we can proceed to the next level. Okay, you might have noticed how there's still this certain something that can make a hand less shitty looking and that elevates an okayish hand to a good one. There are many names that I could title this like uh, confidence or uh, line work, but I think in this case what describes it best would be exaggeration. Sometimes if I really want to hammer home the point of how all of these joints and building blocks look, I really think it doesn't hurt to apply these rules a bit too obviously. That's what I mean by exaggeration and this might come off as a bit silly at first, but I think this actually works like a charm. My favorite example of this would be Yu-Gi-Oh, especially the scenes where a key animation has been made by Takahiro Kagami. His hands sure do look very exaggerated, but you would never get the idea to call them badly drawn or something. So yeah, that's my tip for everyone who's still looking for that one tip that makes the hand look a bit more dynamic or just less amateurish. Exaggeration can really elevate a beginner hand to a more competent looking one. But in order to stylize these building blocks, you obviously have to be able to place them correctly and your proportions also have to be on point. So if you still struggle with drawing hands, it's probably because you're still stuck at level 1 or level 2 here. And if that's the case, I can only recommend practicing these levels until you see some improvement. Uh, but what's level 4 and 5 and so on about? Well, you could get into more details when drawing hands, for sure. You could always learn more stuff about anatomy or maybe learn how to draw wrinkles better, learn the difference between male and female hands and so on. But these are things that we could tackle another day. So if you want to have all of it in one place, you could give my book a shot. It's called A Draw Like a Mangaka and you can pre-order it right now if you want. And also I did promise to give you guys a cheat sheet at the end and I am a man of my words. So here you guys go. Everything that I would want in return would be a like on this video is so that more people get the chance to see it. All right then, I'm off to color some hands instead of drawing them. If you want to see some of my finished artworks, you can just check out my social media. And if you want to see a time lapse on how I'm making these artworks, you can check out my Patreon because that's where I'm uploading full time lapses on how I painted them. And also, there's another video on screen that you could check out. So yeah, there you go. See ya.